it's fascinating to see the timeline for Apex Legends competitive, right? You were with me on this set where we were talking <laughs> about what could be for Apex Legends esports. And then we waited. And then we waited some more. And then we waited even longer. And then we thought it would never come. And then finally we got an announcement for the Apex Legends Global Series. Now, mm -hmm. now that you've had some time to digest the entire structure, the prize pool, and also the fact that here as we stand in 2020, or as we sit in 2020, I should say, we haven't heard too much from Fortnite competitive yet. So I'm wondering, right. is this a prime opportunity for Apex Legends to really cement itself in BR Esports? I think that's what they're looking to do. At least that's what the intention seems like so far with the product that's being put out this year and with the amount of events that they're already letting people know are going to be happening. Not only did we have our first qualifier already, so that just happened at the end of January, so now we know the teams that are going to be going through to the LAN, which is soon in March, but they have the next qualifier lined up for the end of this month, which is getting players into the April event, which is in Paris, and then they've already you know, announced Bucharest in May after that, and we've got an online qualifi qualifier for that in April like it's just back to back to back non-stop they're almost like taking the lull of Fortnite and then making sure they're really shoving apex down your throats so you cannot possibly forget it and I think it's just what they needed to do with that opportunity sounds like they're dropping in hot dropping get it <laughs> oh my drop. god hot drop I'm the dad here you gotta leave the dad jokes you are the new okay, dad stop it uh, stop it glitter uh, what who you were talking about the online qualifiers in the first major that's coming up bring everyone up to speed I guess and who should we be watching out for who are the favorites and who uh, who's kind of a dark horse so Obviously, the favorites are TSM, I think, for everybody at this point. Not only have they managed to win every actual land, but even in this most recent qualifier, they still pulled down first place. I think it's gotten to the point where everybody's kind of sitting here waiting to see who the team will be that dethrones TSM. Because I don't think that it really would have mattered too much to the overall if TSM didn't win the qualifier, as long as they qualified through. But the point of the matter is that they did win again, you know? And it's just impressive at this point, and it speaks to the skill of the players. And I think it also has gotten to the point where maybe some of the other teams need to learn to adapt a little bit. One of the other teams that actually did really well, they came in second place for the qualifiers was Sniper Abusers. This was actually Snipedown's team. And he has played with a different squad for every single event so far. And he's done well like with the exception of the preseason invitational which i'm just gonna call fluke honestly he has proven himself time and time again with a different squad time and time again so you really need to ask is it a leadership ability that he has that's just kind of you know molding a, a successful team is it the people he's playing with is he's just is he that versatile can he play with anybody i'm very excited to see how they do um rogue came in third and this is after another third place finish in the, finish in the gll event in december so they're really starting to pick up some steam and then I think the dark horse question isn't even answerable by picking one team because if you watch the qualifiers at all, something that happened across the board that I think a lot of people were shocked by is that top five, the, the last two top five finishers and continuing in the top 10, there were so many free agent unsigned teams that came out of nowhere that did incredibly well and I don't think anybody was really expecting that. So those teams are either going to be picked up going forward into March, or they're going to show up completely unsigned and hopefully have a similar performance to what they did online. I, I don't think Snipedown is an actual human being. I think he's a cyborg specifically designed to do well at FPS. Sounds like right. I think, I think that's what I think of Sni Snipedown. I mean, it's remarkable. You're right. Like, different teams, different titles, too. Don't forget, he's a Halo champion, too, by the way. Like, exactly. NBD, no big deal. You know, he's just dominating everything he plays. Okay, let's end on this. Um, we know TSM, the team of Alberlelli, reps, Imperial HAL, uh, they have been dominant. Even before Global Series, uh, they won everything, right? So let's end on this. How big is the gap between TSM and the rest of the field? Points-wise, it wasn't that big. 
Now, that was just in the online qualifier specific setup for these major lands that are going to be taking place. They're going to be using the exact same match point system that we saw used in Poland at the preseason invitational. If you don't remember how that goes, teams earn points up until a certain threshold, and then once they hit that threshold, they have to win one more game in order to pull down the championship. That took like nine hours. And yet, TSM won in the end, but moving forward, it can literally be anybody. Well, I hope that events don't last nine hours anymore. <laughs> I think we can all agree on that. Glitter, before we let you go, what's coming up next for you? What's on your plate? Ooh, I actually, I can't say what's on my oh. plate. Oh, oh come on. NDA. We're ESPN. Wait, wait, wait. We have no, to no, break no. this news. This is an announcement of a possible <laughs> announcement yeah, yeah, coming great. up. This is perfect esports. How many sports of you, Glitter? We're sticking in BR, though. I'll say that much. Mm. All right, fair enough. Excellent. Love to hear it. Mm -hmm. Love to hear Glitter getting <laughs> you some love to great see work. It. Love to see it. Love to hear it. Glitter, thank you very much, as always, for joining us uh, here on ESPN Esports.